Hey guys, so today I am so excited. I got all dressed up as you can see because we are talking about God as a fashion designer. There are a lot of things that I knew that God was, but I did not know he was a fashion designer. So we are going to dive into that. But before we do that, if this is your first time or if you've been here before, welcome to Yim's World. Thank you so much for watching. I'm coming to you live from the spot. And if you haven't already, make sure you go ahead and like, subscribe, leave a comment in the comment section, and share the video. Make sure you turn on that notification bell so you can be made aware every time we post. All right, guys, let's get into it. Okay, so today we are talking about Exodus chapter 28. And like I said, I got all dressed up. I'm super excited today because we're talking about God, the fashion designer. I did not know that God was into fashion, but he is absolutely all into fashion. So let's just get right into that. We're talking about Exodus 28. I got my Bible with me and I'm just going to read uh, one or two verses and just take a look at it. So it says in verse one, it says, and take thou unto thee Aaron thy brother and his sons with him from among the children of Israel that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. Even Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and Eliezer, and Ithamar, Aaron's sons. Now, first of all, let me just make a quick comment. And this is kind of a side note. It said uh, that they may, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. So first of all, God is the one who says anyone is a priest, okay? So let's not be putting our priest titles on our head and God didn't say so, okay? Because God said specifically, take unto, take thou unto the Aaron thy brother that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. So God is the one that puts anyone in the priest's office. That's just a side note. Now, verse two, now this verse two, honestly, really caught me off guard. I was not expecting to see what I saw in verse two. It says, and thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron, thy brother, for glory and, be and for beauty. Now, um, that, that caught me off guard, guys. I'll be honest with you. I didn't know that God cared about garments and more specifically he cared that the garments were for glory and for beauty guys this is like revolutionary to me okay because yeah sure like you know put your best foot forward come you know you know but then the bible says come as you are you know all those kinds of things but then again you know come be coming to the presence of god you know I, i've heard a lot of different thoughts you know they we call it the sunday's best right and so we get all dressed up and all that to go to church um and i'll be honest i i get dressed up you know i try to put my best foot forward on on, on sundays um but he said make these holy garments for glory and for beauty so that lets me know that god is into not just he's into the aesthetics as well okay so he has depth but then he also is absolutely into the aesthetics not just of the saint the 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 tabernacle itself but of the people who enter into the tabernacle everybody's got to be putting their best for four we talked about how we had the best um materials already the best kinds of um, items that would make up the things that went into the tabernacle. Now we're talking about the people who will enter into the tabernacle. They also have to put their absolute best foot forward. And that honestly, that really, really took me off guard. So um, I love this because it says for glory and for beauty. For glory, I mean, we know that God is most glorious, right? He is the glorious God, right? And He's beautiful, right? He's He's, you know, we we could go we could go down a long list of things that God is, 
and um and he expects those kinds of things of us and from us and so um he's into the fashion right he's into the colors of, my, of what i'm wearing right he's into the all the fashion about it and honestly guys i just love that 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 god is not boxing into this place where like the the spiritual aspect is so heavy and then we just forget about the natural aspect right he's into everything he wants the whole the whole picture to be beautiful so our whole picture to be beautiful and i just love that and um and then in verse three he does not stop there he says and thou shalt speak unto all that are wise hearted whom i have filled with the spirit of wisdom that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. Now, who is making these garments? Not just anybody, okay? It says, thou shalt speak unto all the wise-hearted who are filled with the spirit of wisdom. So if you want to be a fashion designer in God's house or in his eyes, you need to be filled with you need to be wise-hearted and filled with the spirit of wisdom. So it takes a spirit of wisdom to create these garments that are going to be for glory and that are going to be for beauty. Okay? So don't next time you see a good designer, like, don't discount them. Okay? All right? Hope some of them, hopefully, have the spirit of wisdom and are wise hearted and I, I man I guys I, I have to be honest I just I love this I love 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 this okay now he says and the next thing he said that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him that he may minister to me so consecrate means to set apart to distinguish okay he wears the special garment because he is different than everybody else. He's the priest. He's a high priest. A high priest is different than every other person, right? And he, because this person is going into the presence of God. And you know what I'm saying? He's representing everybody. He's on God's behalf. He's got to have the glory and the beauty on him that comes through the presence of God, right? And... um. But he's got to be consecrated, okay? He's got to be set apart. He can't be like everybody. He can't do the things that everybody else does, okay? And it talks a little bit in, in, in I think, in Leviticus or so, or maybe Numbers. Um, it talks about the, the higher level that is expected from the priest. The priest can't eat what everybody else can eat. The priest can't go to where everybody else can go because there's a higher level because the priest is going into the presence of God, okay? And so um, so he's got to be separate. He's got to be set apart. He's got to be consecrated for the work of the priest's office, okay? And so, guys, honestly, I love this. I love that. I'm eating it all up. Verse 4 says, And these are the garments which... Thou shalt make a breastplate, an ephod, a robe, a broidered coat, a mitre, a girdle, and they shall make holy garments for Aaron thy brother and his sons, that he may minister me, unto me in the priest's office. So we see that repeated again. Make these holy garments. He and he spec. We talked about God, the God of detail, right? And he's specific. He's a specification kind of God. Okay. He says, make this. A breastplate, an ephod, a girdle, a mitre, right? He's saying all these specific things that they need to make. The priest has got to come with these specific things, these very, very specific things. And he's detailing them out. And I, ugh, guys, honestly, beautiful, beautiful stuff. Um, it says, and they shall take gold in verse 5, and blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine linen. And they shall make the ephod of gold, of blue, and of purple, of scarlet, and fine twine linen with cunning work. And it goes on. It goes on and on and talks about. So look, listen. He, this priest is going to be adorned in, like, seriously, kingly, priestly, royal garb. Okay? 
like this is if he you coming into the presence of God if you're entering into the tabernacle right you listen guys <laughs> honestly like I am just I, I just I'm so shocked because I just didn't know that God cared about this kinds of stuff but he absolutely does God is a a fashion designer he is the the fashion designer right so and I suspect that the robes of today that we see on priests and all those kinds of things. I mean, I don't know where I thought they came from, but I'm not sure that I, I really associated that, oh, God is the one who said that they should dress like this. But now I can see that this evolution, it actually started with God and the garments that um, the priests wore, right? So when you go to like a traditional, um, uh, sorry, orthodox kind of church. You see that these priests are wearing these specific kinds of robes, and nobody else wears, them, right? And so, and they're 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 adorned with these beautiful colors and gold and and all these beautiful things. And um, and this this is where it came from. This these these are the origins. And um, you know, sometimes we see, we see these things in our daily lives and we don't realize that they actually have an origin in the Bible and reading through this and doing this devotional is really just opening my eyes to what um, to what God uh, did now it says um, in verse 9 it says and thou shalt take two onyx stones and grave them grave on them the names of the children of Israel Okay, so we've got onyx stones. Listen, we okay. So we got gold, blue, scarlet, purple, material, fine twine linen, and we have um, garments that are made of these beautiful materials. He didn't stop at that. We've got onyx stones, and then a little later on, he talks about okay in verse um, seventeen. It says, "And thou shalt set." And thou shalt set in the settings of stones even four rows. The first row shall be sardius, sardius, topaz, carbuncle. That's the first row. Second row shall be emerald, sapphire, diamond. The third row, ligure, agate, amethyst. And the fourth row is beryl and, and onyx and jasper. They shall be set in gold. Listen. Okay. <sighs> Not just the garments, he's got these jewels and he's got the best of the best jewels. Did you find your um what do they call those things? Never mind. Um your birthstone. I just am so I I, I just can't believe that all these things are, are in the Bible, right? You know? And and he's 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 letting us know that, you know, this priest is is gonna be like decked out okay so you all the people that you think are decked out you know no this priest is decked out in the best of the best if we saw that priest today we probably would think he is doing too much if he had all of those diamonds and gold and all, we I, let's be real you would have thought he was doing too much i would have thought he was doing too much but this is the standard that God set for the high priest. Oh my goodness. It just makes me want to, you know, absolutely put my best foot forward. There's a culture right now um, that's like really rampant in, especially in the American church, where like you just come really casually to church. You can wear, you know, basketball shorts and sandals. And and um, I, I, I get where it's coming from but when i read this i don't see that <laughs> i don't see that i mean the priest is he's supposed to be adorned for glory and for beauty so if you're not if you're not portraying glory and beauty of course now this is he <laughs> there's obviously a thin line between like going overboard this was for glory and beauty of God. So the glory of God and the beauty of God is being seen and being shown on the priest. So if you're doing this for yourself, no. But, you know, this 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 um 
this culture that I, I see, I, I'm not sure I agree with it. I'm not sure I, I agree with what's happening in, in churches today where we just come dressed in like rags, you know, sometimes. I, I'm not sure that that is appropriate or I'm not seeing that in here. I'm not seeing that in here, but that's, that's just that. That's an aside. Breastplate, um, I'm, guys, the, the list goes on, honestly. But I am just so surprised that the, the, the inspiration for the designs, the inspiration for what they're going to wear and all these things, they came from God. And it said for glory and for beauty. This is the thing that I say with my husband a lot. <laughs> we, we just got to start saying this. If I'm wearing something, I'm like, mm, and it's it's something's off. I'm like, you know what? The glory of God is not is, what you're wearing. The the full glory of God is not being seen, and so we need to do something to to make sure the full glory is being seen. And and really, I mean that that is that's what it is. That's what it says here in the Bible. I think we started saying that before we actually did this study, and then when I saw this, of course, I was like. Well, there it is. I didn't know that what I was saying had a had a had a structure, and had a um, foundation in the Bible, but it absolutely does. So, what we wear on a daily basis needs to point to God, and it needs to give glory to God. It needs to show God's glory in His beauty, because that's what it says here. It like that's what it says here. So you know, we you know we have some um, thinkings out there where. You know, you're not supposed to look nice or whatever. You know, I, I, you know, I those I don't know where they origin originated from, but this is what I'm seeing in the Bible, okay? And I know the Bible says, "Come as you are," and you you should. But but then you know, once God's glory comes upon you, you can't remain as you are. You're gonna you're gonna start showing God's glory, and you're gonna start showing His beauty. And so um, this let me know that I, I mean, when I step out, God's glory has got to be seen and his beauty has got to be seen. That's why I got all dressed up for my video. I got my earrings. I got my bracelet. I don't wear bracelets. I got bracelets. I got my necklace on, you know, and I got, you know, a beautiful, beautiful dress because I wanted God's glory and his beauty to be seen. Even in this video, I wanted to show that, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm putting my best foot forward for this. And so, you know, um, one thing that also stood out to me in that verse three, where we talk about who's making these garments. It says wise hearted and people who are filled with the spirit of wisdom. So that lets us know that, you know, inspiration, creativity comes from above. It absolutely comes from above. So if you are um, looking for inspiration, look no further, right? I mean, Go to the Holy Spirit. Ask for wisdom. Ask for ask to be wise-hearted in this specific assignment. And we're talking about garments here. We're talking about fashion here. God is the fashion designer. But of course, we can open this up and we can expand this beyond fashion, right? Any kind of design, you know, God can give a blueprint for that. So God gave this blueprint, right? And this is what we see priests today still sort of um, mimicking and wearing these kinds of things these special robes that only they wear right it's it was it has a foundation in the bible so if you need inspiration for a, a specific design for whatever it is you're doing right um for the layout of the house you want to build or a, a, i don't know anything you can get that inspiration from the Holy Spirit. This, this just solidifies the fact that God gives that kind of inspiration. And of course, it's the best. It's the very best. So if you're looking for that, you know, we, we, a lot of times these days we, we, we go to Google, right? We go to Pinterest, you know, to get inspiration. And I listen, I'm, I'm, I, I do that all the time. But do we go to the Holy Spirit? Do we go to the Holy Spirit? Um, 
the Holy Spirit should be the first reference point. Before we hit Google, we should hit the Holy Spirit, right? HolySpirit.com. Um, we should hit up the Holy Spirit to get inspiration for designs, for, for, for whatever it is that we're working on, because he can give us that spirit of wisdom to design something that we've never seen anywhere, right? Something that we've never seen, that we've never experienced, that we, we haven't seen anywhere else. God can give that inspiration to bring something completely new. He says, see, I am doing a new thing. Can you perceive it? So if you, but for you to be able to perceive the new thing that God is doing, you've got to be in touch with the Holy Spirit. And so um, this, guys, is just, it's just amazing. Like, I just, I couldn't believe it. You know, and, and look, this this chapter, let me see how many verses it is. It's really long. It's 43 verses. And 43 verses of literally spelling out the specific instructions for how to make the priest's garments. Like, there's a whole chapter in the Bible about clothes. <sighs> Amazing. Amazing. And so, um, put your best foot forward. Put your best foot forward and remember that scripture. For beauty, for glory. For glory, for beauty. God has, you know, asked us to represent him and show his glory and his beauty. And, and, and um, if we're doing anything less than that, then we're, we're doing a disservice to ourselves, okay? Because God's glory and his beauty is not being seen in us. And so, yeah, that's it, guys. Read this chapter, Exodus chapter 28. What do you think? Read this. Let me know, guys. I'm, like, super amped about this because I just, it just baffles my mind. I'm like, I didn't even know God was into that kind of thing. I thought he was into the spiritual thing, pray, fast, you know, those kinds of things. Listen, God is multifaceted. And, yes, he's a, he's, he's a manufacturer. He's an uh, interior designer. He's into colors. And he is into the garments. He's a fashion designer. Okay, so then, listen, I have a challenge for you. The next time, to, tomorrow, when you want to pick out clothes, ask the Holy Spirit for inspiration. And I believe the Holy Spirit will inspire you. All right, guys, let's quickly pray because I, I just want to... Um, pray with you guys, you know, concerning these, these topics here. So, so let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much. We thank you for revealing yourself in new ways to us. We thank you because you're a God that is absolutely um, for glory and for beauty. And you want that to be seen on your children. You want that to be seen in our lives. You want that to be seen in us. And so I pray, Father, that you would allow your glory and your beauty to be seen in us every single day. Down to the very clothes that we wear, the shoes, everything, Father. The jewels, Father. Let everything point to you. Let everything point to your glory and your beauty. And let it be seen in our lives. And let it be evidenced in our lives, Father. And, um, Lord, we just ask for inspiration. Holy Spirit inspiration for everything that we might do, even beyond what we wear, even beyond, you know, what we adorn ourselves with, Father. We ask for Holy Spirit inspiration for different designs and different things and the different ideas and the creative things that you've given to us, Father. We ask and we pray that you would inspire us through your Holy Spirit, Father. And we're just so excited about what you're going to do in us in this new year. And in, in 2020, Father, we're looking forward to all the things you're going to do. And we're looking forward to, for you to shine forth your glory and your beauty upon us. So we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we've prayed. Amen. All right, guys. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, make sure you read Exodus 28. It's, 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 it's powerful. It's powerful. Very, very inspiring to me. And uh, let me know your comments in the comment section below. Uh, share the video. And um, make sure you subscribe. Turn on that notification bell. Until next time, guys. See ya.